So let's kick off Animation April with a bonus video that was supposed to be scheduled around May that I'm doing in April because of all the requests I was getting for it. However, 900 views, although it's probably more now that I'm reading it, that's really impressive given that it was a review I made during the slump of my video posting frequency. Now I don't want to necessarily go into my complete thought for Peggy Hill just yet because although she became unlikable in the later seasons, she's a star here. In fact, one of the concepts they do right is that they don't treat the bad side as the wrong side. Each side has its pros and cons and although the series did not push the good side as the good side, it wasn't pushed as the right side. The plot of this episode is that Peggy has to teach sex ed which is a controversial class in the United States, especially the conservative traditional areas such as Arlen. The plot delves into many areas including education versus the government and how much they should have a control into it, tradition versus liberation, and sexual education in the classroom. They also treat this issue as serious. This could have been a comedy and still work, nearly anything can, but treating this issue serious and getting it right fits much better than treating it as a comedy and having it funny, because not only can this medium open people's minds, but it can reinforce your show as being able to handle these topics with the respect they deserve. And with this being the second episode in the entire series, this was a step in the right direction. The episode starts off with Peggy in her office, Hank having back problems. Hank being Hank represents tradition, and although Peggy does too, in the beginning she goes through an experience that Hank does not just yet. Hank gets icy hot rubbed on his back and when Bobby enters the room he covers himself up. Now. Hank is not wrong for doing this. This is what he grew up with, to cover everything to go to church as later episodes show. He follows his rules to the T. They don't sugarcoat this as Bobby hands a permission slip to Hank to participate in the school's sexual education class. Principal wants to teach us a unit from some course they made up in Washington, D.C. Washington? Bobby, go to your room. Now this foreshadows Peggy's eventual change of heart. Notice she doesn't outright object to class, nor does she join Hank with his uproar. In fact, she crosses her arms in what looks like discontent. This can either be because Hank did not consult Peggy before ripping the permission form, or because she doesn't 100% agree with Hank's choices. Speaking of Hank's choice, I don't know what that episode is, but I know people want that episode reviewed. Maybe I can get to it sometime. Besides, it is not up to the United States government to be teaching Bobby the facts of life. That's his parents' job. I agree. If anybody should teach our boy about that, it should be his parents. As Peggy enters Bobby's room, I hear what is a Barney reference, but Barney is aimed at elementary school kids. Then again, I was born in the late 90s. What do I know about 1990 early children shows target demographics? Although if I am right, then this shows the somewhat consequence of raising your child to stay a quote unquote child as long as possible. Although I can't really say how right or wrong this style of parenting is, I'm not even 20 yet, I can say that due to Bobby still having this mentality reaching middle school, it's only logical to assume that he will have the same growth of mentality going to high school, which this series doesn't depict, unfortunately. As far as this episode goes, it's straightforward to the plot, giving it as much time to state its case, which is crucial for episodes such as this that handle a controversial issue. I also like how they don't extract the characters from their personality to tell their views on sex ed in the classroom. Peggy Hill attempts to explain the birds and bees to Bobby. Bobby, honey, um, what do you know about sexual relations? I don't know. Nothing much. I'm a little worried about being a slut. Although I said that Peggy Hill was the star, Bobby is golden here. This goes back to my other review where I said that the awkward animation and the silent pauses contributed to this style of comedy that King of the Hill intentionally or unintentionally has. They have something that girls do not have. Yeah. You know, some thing. You mean a penis? So we go outside to the alley to see Boomhauer and the crew discussing the recent news. Hank not only speaks about this opposition against the class for his son, but then advises Dale to do the same. Now in one sense I could say that this is a double standard for Hank. He doesn't want an outside source to influence his son, yet here he is influencing Dale's or John Redcorn's son. But Hank is Hank and Dale is Dale, so since Dale is already on his side, this isn't a bigger glaring issue. So Hank and Dale go off explaining their issue you know, the quote unquote bad side. Since they portray these points through the main characters and not some one-off antagonist, this episode isn't viewing anyone as wrong. Hank, I couldn't get the words out. Oh, gee, you didn't send her in to do a man's job, did you? 
I just noticed that he's wearing the belt that Peggy recommended for him to wear for his back. Why didn't he just wear it on the inside? In this episode, they also show a snippet of how Peggy and Hank were raised, particularly their birds and bees talks respectively. So they show Hank's first. Yeehaw! Hey, what you crying for, boy? It's a good show. This is a damn good show. That isn't traumatizing at all. But then again, Hank's childhood wasn't the best. This might not even been the worst part of his childhood. I know this was not the first or the last of Cotton's delusions. So Hank decides to put Bobby through his own talk by going to a dairy farm? I guess that's one way, but then you also have to learn how milk is extracted and later made. The dairy lady plugs the matchmaker machine into the cow and Hank does a quick 180 on his decision to not have Bobby be taught sexual education. Notice that this is the first time that Hank switched his decision. Now because Hank never got a clear photo on what exactly was going to be taught to Bobby, it is assumed that everything Hank knows would be taught to Bobby and as we later learn in the series, Hank does not know much. So now the health teacher quit because Dale sent them death threats? And Hank is happy to quote unquote put this back into the closet. Don't believe me? Hey, on the bright side, since there's no one to teach that sex ed course, we can put all this ugliness back in the closet. Again, although my views differ from Hank, I understand the trouble he may have to communicate this to his son, let alone Peggy. Also, my opinion does not matter when it comes to the topic of this review. As far as I'm concerned, Hank acts like one side and Peggy soon acts like the other. However, she only starts to change visibly when she accepts teaching the sex ed class. Hank is, of course, shocked to say the least. So Peggy is reading what looks like an outdated book. Yes, even for her time. She doesn't even overhear Luann's complaints about her own course. I also like to point out that they fixed Luann's jawline because it did look very rugged and masculine. And yes, even for the time, especially when they did Peggy's just fine. Self-exploration is a perfectly natural exercise throughout pubescence. Luann, honey, tell me, what is it like to live without shame of any kind? Is it a good feeling? Yeah. They also show Peggy's side of being taught the birds and the bees. Honey, you're at that special time of life. The time when a little girl becomes a woman. My mother gave me this and I'm passing it on to you. The loveliness of woman. There's nothing in here but pictures of flowers. As you can see, neither side was directly told what sex was, therefore it's unlikely that either could have reached the decision of having Bobby taught exactly what it was. Like I said in the Would I Reboot King of the Hill episode that I did, Hank grew up with his traditions and now has to battle the open-mindedness of Bobby and the community around him. Now in this episode, his mentality kind of spills over into the naiveness spectrum, but I chalked it up to him being in middle school. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that 1990s middle school kids didn't know as much about the birds and the bees as some middle school kids know today. The animation is also very lazy. Some characters can be seen not moving at all. Even though this is the 90s, many cartoons back then weren't as bad as this, and like I said in the other reviews, since that may count as nitpicking, I won't hold it away from this otherwise perfectly decent story. Hank, of course, is still very open about his opposition against the teachings of sexual education despite changing his mind and wanting the permission slip. Did you forget about the matchmaker machine at the dairy farm? Now that I think about it, I'm not really sure what he was expecting Bobby to be taught. You sure you don't want him? Uh-huh. I'm not gonna need my toys anymore. After I learn sex ed, I'll be too busy dating. Who? I don't know. Whoever wants to have sex with me. So the crew in the alley learned that Peggy is teaching the class now. I don't really understand this scene. Is Hank upset? Is he embarrassed? Is he frustrated? It's a very gray area. Or maybe this is just a cliche. I can see why Dale, Bill, and Boomhauer would not want to talk bad about Hank's wife, but on the other hand, Hank again is being the same influence that he doesn't want limited on his son. So here comes this scene, which shows how outright malicious the town can be towards opposition. Bobby being on the baseball team actually gets a swing in. I wonder what happened to his skill. I just don't know if I can overcome the crippling sense of shame that I got from my mother. Whew! Well, we knew you wouldn't. Yeah, I've been telling people, Peggy Hill is not one of those teachers that puts all that intellectual hooey above common decency. Mm-hmm. Well, well, sometimes a little intellectual hooey is a good thing. When my husband would crawl all over me at night and do his business, well, I would just close my eyes and think of them pretty flowers. 
Oh, Bonnie, you poor, poor woman. Although animation has improved and this particular scene doesn't give too many facial hints that you can tell, but you can still tell that Peggy isn't exactly accepting of the way she grew up. Especially when she sees the results in other people, therefore she can see the result in herself and the future possibility for Bobby. So this is where it can get a little muddy. Hank reads this book, Sexual Male Organs? I guess Hank is never wrong. So Peggy Hill tries to get Hank into rubbing some pretty feet and hands on her back then offering some to Hank's elbows. I also see an animation error. Peggy is seen with her hand lowering down to put the glasses on the end table, yet in the next scene her hand goes back up just to go back down. Then they show a montage of Peggy Hill trying to learn how to pronounce the male and female sexual organs. This is paired with Hank cutting down the tree he was cutting down during the duration of this entire episode, which led me to think that this is a metaphor for something. Vagina! <laughs> Hey, hey, I just said- I heard you. The whole neighborhood can hear you cussing. So now we see the tradition versus liberation that Peggy and Hank were arguing about. It says right here he can't take the class without permission of both his parents. Now, just hold on. Are you saying I am not good enough to teach my own son? If you do not approve, you do not have to sign, and I do not approve. Permission denied. It what says right here he can't parent. take the class. So Peggy Hill goes through with doing the sex ed class. Meanwhile, Hank took Bobby to his job in order to circumvent Peggy's controversial teachings. The class goes silent as Peggy enters. It is clear that Peggy's nervous, just as the class. So we get to this moment. I'm not sure what to think about this moment. Should I be upset at Hank for accepting his feelings towards this clear double standard or stay neutral? I guess I should ask, if Hank did not believe this double standard, would this episode have a drastic change? Well, I guess with Dale, Peggy, and the rest of the town, the answer to that is obviously no. The childhood moment still happened, so I guess I will stay neutral in this matter. I just wanted to say you don't have to worry about me because I'm never going to have sex. Oh, Bobby, now don't say that. I thought that's what you wanted. Well, yes, if you were my daughter, but you're my son. Why is it not okay for girls, but it's okay for boys? It's called the double standard, Bobby. Don't knock it. We got the long end of the stick on that one. Even though I understand this way of thinking, this is not the way I choose to think. So Hank basically goes through with his own ladies at the baseball stand moment that Peggy went through when he sees what oppressing can do to a person. So he decides again, after going back on his word like two or three times, to actually go through with bringing Bobby to the class. It turns out that none of the class actually got permission from both of their parents, leaving Bobby with the privacy and personal experience of learning from someone he- Oh, oh, Bobby, they messed you up so bad. So Peggy Hill ends up teaching Bobby and Hank makes up for it by, uh, 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 he, 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 he... Oh! Oh! Oh. Uh, are you okay? Uh-huh. Well, uh, as long as we're down here. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, that was Square Peg. Uh, the episode is good. The topic was handled with the respect that it deserves, and there was a realistic story. Although Hank is a stubborn character, he shows that he can change. Although Peggy can be arrogant, she shows that she's not entirely blind to reality. I want to show that King of the Hill is probably one of the better animations to come out of the late 90s. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some April Fool's stuff to do. I'm already late. A bit late with this review, but I'm still glad to put it out under request. So, if you like my content so far, please subscribe and slap the like button. And if you agree or disagree with what I said, please let me know in the comments below. And even though this is a controversial issue, please let's not delve into personal attacks. Anyways, I hope your time was all spent. And, Alpha.